Okay, welcome to section 3.10. Uh, here we're going to talk about two related topics, linear approximations and differentials. It has nothing to do with the chain rule, it has to do with the concept of differentiability. Let's do linear approximations first. L of x, the linear approximation of f of x at a, is just the equation of the tangent line to f of x at x equal a. So here is a picture. We have a function at x equal a. Assuming the function is differentiable, what would the equation of L of x be? Well, use the point-slope formula. You got the slope is f prime of a and the points a f of a. So by the point-slope formula, y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. You plug everything in and solve for y, you get y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So there, there it is. The equation for the linear approximation, or the tangent line approximation, or the equation of the tangent line, L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. What the significance is, is that if the function is differentiable at a, and you zoom in at this point, doesn't the function appear to be a straight line? We've done that a lot of times. In fact, the function appears to be acting just like the tangent line. We, we say that the linear approximation is a good estimator to the function values as long as x is close to a. If x is close to a, l of x will be very close to f of x. And that's what this says. If x is close to a, then the tangent line values will be close to the function values. Let's look at an example. Here we go. Find the, uh, find the linear approximation to uh, um, f of x equals square root of x near a equals 4. Well, this is the uh, formula for the L of x, the equation of the tangent line. You've got to compute the derivative first, and we're plugging in a equals 4. So the derivative uh, at 4 becomes 1 over 2 times square root of 4. And then f of a is f of 4. You get the square root of 4 here. When you simplify it, this becomes a 2. This becomes 1 fourth. So when you solve for l of x, l of x is equal to x over 4 plus 1. It's just the equation of the tangent line. The, the picture looks kind of like this. And it, it seems re reasonable that this equation could be the answer. At the point where x is 4 and y is 2, the tangent line appears to have this e equation. Part b, use the estimation, the linear approximation in part A, to approximate the square root of 4.02. Well, what we said earlier was f of 4.02 is going to be close to L of 4.02, as long as we're close to 4, which we are. So um, f of 4.02 is the square root of 4.02. If you plug in 4.02 into the L of x function right here, and you, you can actually do this division just about in your head. 4.02 divided by 4 is 1.005, so when you add 1 you get 2.005. Part C, is that estimate we just made in part B too high or too low? Well, if you look at the graph, is the tangent line approximation going to be too high or too low there? Since the tangent line lies above the function, wouldn't you guess that it's, it's too high? And that, that, that's, that's correct. All right, now this next one is, is very uh, important in physics. I remember approximating the, um, or look at, looking at the linear approximation for the sine function near a equals zero. If you look at the graph, um, what would you guess the linear approximation or the equation of the tangent line is to the sine function near x equals zero? In order to find it, you have to compute the derivative function. Derivative of sine x is cosine of x, so when you plug in the linear approximation function, L of x equals the sine of 0 plus the cosine of 0 times x minus 0, and that turns out to be L of x equals x, because um, sine of 0 is 0. Uh, that's what you would have guessed, I imagine. Okay, let's do differentials now. It's really the same general concept we were just talking about. The notation is a little different, and the notation is used a lot in Math 152, so it's important that you get used to the differential not notation we're going to talk about here. Let's look at this graph here. Uh, you have a function f of x. Th when, x when you have this as your x-coordinate, the point would be x, f of x. If you go in additional uh, units, call this distance delta x, so this is x plus delta x. The second point would be x plus delta x, f of x plus delta x. And let's call L of x the, the, the tangent line at x. 
Notice that delta y is the actual change in the function value. It's, it's, it's this y coordinate minus this y coordinate. You can also think of it as this vertical distance right here, delta y. All right, here we go. So we define the differential of x, dx, to be delta x. So the geometric interpretation of this, so you could think of this distance here not only being delta x, but dx as well. And we define the differential of y to be f prime of x times dx. So what's the in ge geometric interpretation of that? Well, I'll show you here. See this, this distance right here, this red line? This is actually the change along the tangent line. Let's, let's for now call that h. Since the tangent line has slope f prime of x, remember it's the tangent line at x, what is the slope of this line l of x? It's, it's the rise over run, isn't it? So it becomes h over dx. So when you multiply both sides by h, you get that h equals f prime of x times dx. So uh, that h is, is precisely dy. That's what I just showed you, that this vertical distance is dy. dy is the change along the tangent line. Delta y is the actual change in the function. And since l of x is a good approximation to f of x, as long as we're close to x, another way to say that is dy should be close to delta y. Saying it a different way, the change along the tangent line, dy, should be close to the actual change in the function, delta y. That's what this says right here. Uh, before we look, look at an example, notice the notation here. What do you get if you divide dy by dx? You get f prime of x dx divided by dx. The dx is cancel, so you get f prime of x. So my point is, is that the notation is consistent with what we've been talking about. Okay, let's look at an example. So in this example, suppose um, f of x is the square root of x, and at x equal 4, delta x is 0 0.02. The first question is, find dx. Well, isn't dx delta x? So dx would still be 0 0.02. What would, um, what, would f prime of, what would dy be, the differential of y? The differential of y is f prime of x dx. Um, we've computed the derivative before. f prime of x is uh, 1 over 2 square root of x. So when you plug in at the point when x equals 4, you get um, 1 over 2 times square root of 4. That becomes 1 fourth. When you multiply that by 0 0.02, you get 0 0.005. What is that? That's the change along the tangent line, remember? Compare that with the actual change in the function, delta y. The actual change in the function is just f of 4.02 minus f of 4. When you plug those in and subtract, you get 0.004993. Notice they're very close together. Okay, in this example, they want you to use differentials to approximate the error in computing the volume of a sphere if the radius is measured to be 10 centimeters, so that's r, with a possible error with a possible maximum error of plus or minus 0.2 centimeters. So that's what we're going to call delta r. So we, we want to approximate uh, the error in computing the volume. So uh, you got a sphere, and r is 10. So the error in, in is what we're calling delta r. That's plus or minus 0.2 centimeters. And uh, the, the, the idea here is that the actual error, which is delta v, is going to be approximately equal to, the, to dv. Now what is dv again? dv is uh, v prime of r times dr. So we have to compute the derivative. The derivative is 4 pi r squared. Uh, notice the units are going to be centimeters cubed per centimeter or centimeter squared. When r is 10, v prime of 10 is 400 pi. So we, we go over here and we, when r is 10, we have to plug in v prime of 10 times dr. dr or delta r is plus or minus 0 0.0. Um, 0 0.2, so when you multiply it out, you get plus or minus 80 pi cubic centimeters. That's an approximation to the error in computing the volume if you have a maximum error of plus or minus 0.2 centimeters in the radius. See you then.